Hello, everybody, and welcome back. <clears throat> Election 44 has officially come to an end, and uh, the majority of the seats did say, stay the same. Uh, however, there were still many races that changed, including some races that changed in favor of the NDP, some ridings that went from NDP to other parties. Uh, so for more on that is Lindsay Matheson. She's the uh, incumbent MP and the MP-elect uh, for another term in the riding of London Fanshawe for the New Democratic Party. Thank you, Lindsay, for joining me. So uh, I'll start now with um, the NDP's uh, campaign. So your party is leading or elected in 25 ridings across the country, uh, which is only one more than in the 2019 campaign. So what do you think should have been done differently um, um, in order to grow your seat count from the 2019 election? Well, actually, uh, in terms of the, the numbers, uh, New Democrats were the only party that increased their voter turnout, uh, where the other four saw less people actually vote for them than in the last election. And I know a lot of that, you know, is, be is because of COVID, but yet our numbers still went up. And so I think that that says a lot. And uh, I've never been a fan of first past the post uh, in terms of our electoral system. Uh, I, I look at the numbers and we got, I think, 1.5 million more votes than the, the bloc. Quebecois, and yet we have less seats. And so uh, this, again, is, is something that we need to to push for. Um, it, it's electoral reform. And, and you know, I, I heard in the last few days of the election, the, the prime minister saying, oh, maybe he'd talk about it, but not mixed member proportional representation. So I roll my eyes a lot when I hear things like that from, from Justin Trudeau, sadly. Uh, but ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, none of the none of the parties really, like you said, changed one way or the other. Uh, but yet our votes still went up. And even uh, I was looking at the uh, the mail in ballot uh, results that came in today for London Fanshawe. And despite the fact that the vote has actually gone down in terms of turnout, again, COVID related or what have you, uh, timing purposely on, on behalf of the Liberals, uh, my, my raw numbers went up, my percentage went up. And so that's what we build on. That's what we keep fighting on, fighting for, talking to folks, getting people out, making them realize that their, that their vote counts and that it's and that it's something that needs to we need to come together towards and build towards and so we we stay positive on that you were obviously re-elected for another term as you mentioned the parliament looks fairly similar uh to the way it did prior to the call of the election and to the last parliament um we've seen in the last parliament the uh ndp uh propped up the government for things like the budget uh, largely um, in part to obviously avoid an election in uh, the middle of a pandemic, uh, which unfortunately did end up happening um, at the prime minister's request. But um, I, my next question would just be like, is the NDP willing to prop up the government again to just make sure that Canadians don't have to go back to the polls and, and vote for a second time in the middle of a pandemic? You know, I really um, want to challenge the word uh, prop up uh, as, as used. I, um, as a caucus, we've come together on every single vote, right? Every, every issue that we, that came before us and on things on, on, or after the election, when, when people said, here's a minority work within it. Um, and then, of course, with COVID, uh, we took that very seriously. And, and we said that we were going to push the government in any way that we possibly could get from them what we could to ensure that we were supporting people, helping people. And that's what we did on things that we felt that we could improve. We did the hard work to actually make it better. Uh, a lot of liberal bills came through and they were meh. Uh, and we pushed to make sure that they were that they were stronger, that they were better, that they they had better results. We did that hard work, whereas the other maybe just kind of was was uh, skating through. Um, and we're going to continue to do that. If there's something that we absolutely can't agree on, then then and that goes against our our platform, that goes against our principles. Absolutely not. Um, but if there are things that we know that we can improve that will actually make life better, if we can push the government um, in ways that they are un were in initially unwilling to go, uh, then we will push them, right? Like that's how the CERB was increased. That's how the wage subsidy was increased. That's why students got a benefit at all. Um, 
That's why businesses, we were able to shift uh, for rental subsidies to go directly to the businesses instead of landlords. All of those things that happened because we worked with the government, we we tried to hold them to account. And at the end of the day, they are still the government. And so they have an agenda, they put it forward, uh, and we will we will push them as as much as we possibly can to ensure that they're um, they're doing what's best for Canadians. Now, all of that said, of course, I think things are a little bit different this time. Uh, they tried to get away with um, thinking that they could get a, minor- or a majority government at a specific time. I don't think that they can do that again. I don't think that they can get away with that again. Elections are very expensive. Not that they're not worth it, but elections are very expensive. And so to pull that again on their part, I think would be uh, really risky. And I don't think that they would do it. And so it provides us with even more leverage to say, no, no, no you need to work with us. And for them to work with the other two, I don't know, I'm not sure. So that's that's in their court. What I can worry about on our end is is that, you know, we're gonna continue to fight for people and help people and in any, in any way we can. Okay, and um, I mean, party leadership uh, for many party leaders uh, remains unclear. Uh, division in the Green Party uh, mm. emerged even before the election. Um, there were calls for its leader to resign over internal disagreements. Now, uh, a national councillor for the Conservative Party um, has challenged the leadership of Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole, saying, uh, quote, he hasn't ran on his true blue principles that he ran on in the leadership race. Um, so I'm just wondering, is the NDP united in Jagmeet Singh staying on as a uh, leader of its party? Because it seems to be like uh, there's a lot of other parties right now who don't seem to be united behind their leader. Yeah, um, uh, it, it'll be interesting the next uh, six months or so, I guess, in terms of all the leaderships. Uh, I wonder, too, about uh, about Trudeau and what he'll decide to do. Um, for us, though, I've never I've never been more united behind my leader. Uh, like I said before, he he has inspired so many and we've raised that vote turnout. Um, I I can't tell you the number of people on the doorstep that said to me, I really like Jagmeet Singh. He's genuine. You can tell that he cares about people. I'm really excited about it. Um, the number of young people that joined my campaign that were canvassing for me because they they identified, they they felt like uh, he was able to reach out to them and directly connect with, with those young folks. Um, I have a ton of people now wanting to come on to our, our writing executive and continue to participate um, in that that longer, bigger electioneering kind of perspective. So um, all of that is really exciting. And I and I give a lot of credit to Jugmeet for that. We were very um, solid and and together uh in the last caucus um and and those small yet uh we were small yet mighty and i think that we accomplished a great deal i can't see that changing in any way um every leader has to go through leadership reviews every couple of years um that's a normal part of the democratic process but i don't see anything like that coming forward most uh folks that i've talked to are very very happy with jagmeet's leadership and um i'll just ask you one last question to Uh, finish it off. I think this is a good way to finish it off. As we head into the 44th uh, Parliament, are there Mm -hmm. any key issues or any key bills that uh, you and your party would like to solve? And just what are some election promises that uh, your party made that uh, will be turned into bills first as we head into the next Parliament? So I think on our part, you're going to see us continue to fight for pharmacare, for dental care. We introduced introduced those as uh, private members' bills, made sure that they they came first um, and prioritized them. We know that that's still going to impact people positively. It's going to help in terms of affordability. So we're going to push on that. Um, The tax, the wealth tax as well, uh, closing tax loopholes, uh, ensuring that there's a a better stream for federal revenue um, that liberals and conservatives have failed to... uh, change over the many, many years. And when people are talking about all of these, these worries about increasing debt, um, we still need to ensure that we're, we're putting money back into people. And so um, cracking down on those loopholes, on those havens, um, on 
ensuring that those who who gain such incredible wealth on top of their already incredible wealth during this pandemic, uh, that they pay for our recovery and help us get through this because they have benefited so much from Canadians and Canadians need that fair share. We all need to pay that fair share. So those are the things that I think that we'll start to, to really focus on. Of course, too, um, the premiers are, are talking right now about um, uh, cost of long-term care and um, uh, that was something, of course, that we we were focusing on, ensuring that we remove the privatization of long-term care, strengthening our health care services, um, the environment, you name it. I know that I have some private members' bills that I will uh, reintroduce, um, trying to also strengthen uh, promises on child care and the environment, uh, some stuff around veterans and um, I, I've got a lot of plans. I, I was in the middle of a lot of work before and I want to I want to get right back at it. Uh, so we're uh, New Democrats are often seen as the ones who, who do the majority of the work. We're we're you know, worth several members of parliament all in one. So um, we're going to continue to do that and push as hard as we possibly can. All right, uh, Lindsay Matheson, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, it's been great chatting with you. And uh, yeah, best of luck as we head into the next parliament. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Bye now. Bye.